All right, we're back with Jeff Diamond, our guest here tonight on Sportsline. Let's go to the phones here. 737-7767 is the number. Leon, kind enough to wait through the break. Leon, good evening. You're up with Jeff Diamond here on Sportsline. Hey, Steve and Jeff. How you guys doing? Doing good, well, Leon. Thank you. Good. Uh, you know, I, I think that the receiving core and the defensive backfield, I mean, both of those areas are weak and need to be revamped. But, you know, for the past few years, the Titans haven't, haven't done well in scouting. You know, that's been a real weak spot in the organization. But, you know, when the team starts to cut down their rosters, there's going to be some really decent talent released out there because they're not going to have a place on the rosters. And these guys are going to be playing for these positions in preseason, you know, for somebody to pick them up. And the Titans really, really need to be aware uh, and, and, you know, of the talent that's going to be, you know, covering everybody trying to make their 53 roster, 53 man roster, you know, they need to be on the lookout for talent. And I'll just, uh, cl just close out and let you guys comment. All right, Liam, we appreciate that. Had a little bit of a bad connection there, so we appreciate you bearing with us. I think one thing John Robinson has proven is he's aware of everything that's out there so far. I mean, he has made moves. He's not been afraid to ruffle a few feathers or trade or pick up a guy, try a guy out, whatever it's going to be. So I, I don't think that's an issue. But where do you think are the places that you can't – I mean, can you make a – can you make that – decision in training camp to bring in a guy at cornerback or wide receiver it seemed like those are the places that maybe it might work the best because they're farther away from the ball and they're they're more individual positions is that where you can get it done yeah you, you can potentially but but those aren't great players that, are, that right. are, are being released at the 53 cut or the or, or or at the even at the 70 cut whatever these are guys that that are being released for a reason mm -hmm. that they're not great players and and so the, the way to really improve your team is is with with draft choices or with developing players and hopefully that'll happen and sometimes you you do find a guy and as as we found a Derek Mason in the fourth round and and I think the best GMs really know how to find the best players even later in the draft and and I think back to to our Super Bowl team and, and we had a John Runyon was a fourth round pick we had a Benji Olson was a fifth round pick Derek Mason was a fourth round pick and, and uh, Kevin Long, I think, was a seventh-round pick, was starting at center. And, and so those are the kind of guys that, that really help a team become the kind of team you want them to be. And so, so that's what we need to see out of John Robinson. Is he going to find those gems in the later rounds? Is, is a Kalen Reed in the seventh round, Mr. Irrelevant, right. who runs a 4.3840, by the way. Pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. And so maybe they can develop him into a player. And so I, I think those are the things. Cortland Finnegan was a seventh-round right. pick. He had a pretty great career here. Sebastian so. Tritola is another guy that you had mentioned That's earlier. Right. You get him in the sixth round. He was an All-American at Arkansas. Yes. And, by the way, you need a guard right now. So maybe he's a guy that comes in and has an immediate impact. You, you love to see those impact picks. The, the thing to me, Jeff, when I look at what John Robinson and, and Mike Malarkey, too, are trying to do right now, is let's not forget this is a team that's won five total games the last two years tied for the worst record in the NFL in each of those seasons I think what they've done this offseason with bulking up offensive and defensive lines getting two running backs that you can pound it with in Murray and Henry I think they're saying we're gonna be tougher we're gonna have an attitude and we're gonna shorten these games because when you get 80 and 90 snaps a game, sort of the Chip Kelly or the college philosophy, so to speak, what those coaches are really saying is, I think I got better talent than you do, and so I want the most snaps possible because at the end of the day, my guys will win out. And I think they're kind of saying, we're not there yet. We're coming from way down here. We're not there yet. Let's shorten these games down, take the pressure off of Mariota, and just try to get there in the fourth quarter. Maybe we can win some of them. But that's the way they want to play right now. Do you agree? Yeah, I think they do. I think they want to be physical. They want to pound the ball. We, we know that with, with Murray and, and Henry and that offensive line. But the question is, if teams really want to stop the run, they can try to figure out a way to stop the run. They'll put eight in the box and try to stop the run. You've got to be able to throw the ball to be able to loosen it up for the running game. And so... It, it's really a two-way street, and, and so they have to have some success throwing it. 
and they've got a great tight end in Delaney Walker. I think they've got a potentially great quarterback in Mariota who also can pull the ball down and run. And, and as long as he's running smart, if he's a Russell Wilson type guy, knows how to protect himself, I think that's good. And, and his injuries have not really been from running. They've been more in the pocket. So right. uh, I, I think that there are a lot of, of things that can happen. And I, and I think you're right. They would love to pound the ball, but you've got to be able to throw it still and to be able to move the chains. And Because if they want to stop the run, they'll try to figure out a way to do it. And so I think the big challenge for this team, to me, are those first-round draft pick offensive linemen. And I'm not talking as much about Jack Conklin. I'm talking about Taylor Lewan, and I'm talking about Chance Warmack. These are two number one picks who were high number one picks, top 15 picks. They've got to start delivering on, on what the promise that, that the Titans saw in them. And hopefully Russ Scrim, the new offensive line coach, can get it out of them. They're the foundation of the offense. Taylor Lewan's a guy that played a little bit better towards the end last year. They have raved about how he's been this offseason. The question about Chance Warmack, they did not pick up his fifth-year option about a month or so ago. And I think some people thought, well, that's the writing on the wall that he's definitely not going to be back. R really, to me, all it says is they're not going to pay him $11 million to be back. Is Chance Warmack got a future here in Tennessee? Yeah, I think he does. I think he's a quality player. And, and I, I think, as I said, with, with really good coaching from, from Russ Grimm, I think he has a chance to develop. And maybe he'll end up getting paid $11 million because they can always franchise him. They can always do an extension during the season if they see him developing, and and we'll see. I mean, eleven million for a guard is is pretty high right. salary. Nobody and, out there in the league, if yeah. he's a free agent right now, no one's paying him eleven million dollars, no, exactly right? right? So that that to me is why I don't think it is saying oh he's definitely done. No, because there's no need to pay him eleven million dollars, no. and if you can avoid paying a guy eleven million dollars to do the same job, that's always smart business. That's right. And as I said, they can franchise them, which would be a the number would still be probably pretty high, right. but I think that, I think they're, they sent a message to Chance Warmack. We want to see it. We want to see how you're doing. We want to see you developing, improving, and being the the first round pick that we we thought you were. And and hopefully he can be. That's a message that goes out to a lot of guys when you bring in a new general manager because most of the guys in that locker room aren't John Robinson guys at this point. So they've got to prove that they're the type of Titans players that John Robinson and Mike Malarkey want. Back to the phones we go. Terrence, good evening. You're on Sports Talk. How you doing? You doing all right? We're doing great, Terrence. Oh, yeah, I was just calling because well, I was thinking about some other free agents and positions where we finally could use a few players. And now Antoine Bowden, he's old and washed up. But... He might be better than any receiver we have. <laughs> <laughs> you might be right about that. He he can still probably go out and catch 80 balls. <laughs> you know, but this is the big one. Now, this is kind of controversial because I know this guy named Greg Hardy has a bad reputation. I really haven't got to watch him play a whole lot. But just in the little bit of plays I've seen him play, man, he's big and fast and strong, and he, he's a force on the defensive line, and I'm pretty sure he can get 10 to 12 sacks anywhere, and with our pass rush, still a guy, he might be okay, but I don't, I don't think he's going to get 10 or 12 sacks this year, maybe in the future, so when you think about Kevin Hardy, I know he has a bad uh, reputation, but he's a, he's a super player from what I've seen. Yeah, I, I think Greg Hardy is probably more of a 4-3 guy right. than a 3-4 guy. And, and I think he is a bad character guy, which I'm not sure I'd want to insert in any locker room. Uh, he's. It didn't work out the way Dallas won it last year. No, it year. did not, and, and neither did it in Carolina. So I, I wouldn't touch Greg Hardy. I, I just think he's a bad guy, and, and, and I, I wouldn't want him on my team. But and as I said, I think furthermore, I, I don't think he's a great fit, and I think they need to get it out of the guys that they've got here. We'll uh, hit a couple more Titans topics before we get to a break. We've talked about Marcus Mariota, and I think basically everyone around the Titans organization has high hopes. They obviously drafted him number two overall for that purpose. He did some nice things last year when he was healthy. As someone who's evaluated talent in this league, has looked at quarterbacks for a long time, what is it about Mariota that you've seen now in a season that makes you believe he can truly be that guy long term? Well, I, I just think he 
just has has all the intangibles and tangible skills. I think he he can throw the ball. He can run. He's he's nimble in the pocket. I think he is a, a real quality character person that that inspires his teammates and and works well with everybody, getting everybody on the same page. And 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 I just think he's a playmaker. And I think that's what you want out of your quarterback. And I, I've been very impressed with what he's done. I think he is, has a great future in the NFL. And then moving to tight end, Delaney Walker, we, we talked about what a great weapon he is. Is he potentially set to go down as the greatest free agent acquisition that the Titans have had? Not to take away from any of your work or <laughs> anybody else's, but I, I believe they got him for $12 million over like four years or something when they first got him. Now they've given him a little bit more money and an extension. But the type of production he's had already – and each year continues to trend up. If he continues to do that, is that as good as it gets? Yeah, I think he's been a, he's been a great acquisition, fortunately, because they had so many bad free agent acquisitions right. over the years. <laughs> and so I, I think that the Titans needed to have somebody a, as a hit because there were just too many misses in free agency, unfortunately, and they had the money to, to make the, the acquisitions. And, and you think back to even this past offseason that – how would it have looked if, if you had a Josh Norman in your secondary? Uh, now, I understand he's making, whatever, $14 million a year in Washington, but, but wow, he, he's an impact player. And, and how much better would your secondary look? And the Titans had the cap space to do something like that. Didn't do it. Right. We talked about the numbers that they brought in. You could have gotten Josh Norman, one guy, and maybe not gotten a Blake or a, a Johnson or a McCain or somebody like that. So certainly different ways to approach it. But we'll see. We'll see if those numbers guys and the competition there bring somebody and the cream rises to the top or whether that's going to be a move that they regret. I, I guess the other thing we look at with this team is I guess we have to work under the assumption that you have a long-term plan as a general manager, right? Especially a new sure. general manager. I mean, they're taking over a team that – wasn't very good. No. They're obviously trying to make them good as soon as possible. Would love to win games or compete for the division or a playoff berth this year. But you have to assume that the, there's got to be a step process here, right? That you get it to a certain spot and then next year you address some other big needs. Yeah. And we have seen teams make a big jump. I think the year the Rams won the Super Bowl, they were coming off a 4-12 and team. Right. Unfortunately, they beat us. Years ago. And, and we were right, coming right. off an 8-8 eight eight team. So you can make a big jump, but but when you're coming from three and thirteen and two and twelve or two and fourteen, it, it's 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 tough, and you have to really have a little bit of patience. It's hard for the fans to do that because they have seen teams make big steps quickly. I think if this team got to the to the seven win level, six seven win level this year, it's a good step, and then have that have those extra p couple first round picks next year, attack the wide receiver and cornerback positions, get some more impact players at the skill positions in here in year two of John Robinson, and then hopefully these draft choices that they've picked develop. And, and, and we talked about the pass rush and uh, uh, Greg Hardy. I think a, a Kevin Dodd could be a, a huge acquisition for this team once he recovers from the, the surgery. I, this is a guy that had three, what, three sacks in the national championship right. game? against Alabama, that impressed me. Pretty good offensive line to do that against on yes. a big, big stage as well. Yes. As you look at the drafts in the AFC South, as we mentioned earlier, I like what John Robinson did. Obviously, we'll wait for grades long term. I love what the Jaguars did. I like what the Texans did. Colts draft was pretty good as well, I think. As you look at those teams and, and the acquisitions there, have the Texans now done enough offensively to complement their defense to be a real contender? Have the Jaguars come up enough? Have the Titans come up enough? Or are the Colts still sort of the clear number one team in this division in your mind? Well, I, I think that, that Houston's the defending division champion, but that was because Andrew Luck was right. hurt. And, and so I think you have to look start with the Colts. And I, I, I'm not sure that they've addressed their defensive problems yet. And, and so I, I think it's, it's a division that's, that's pretty wide open in terms of Indianapolis and Houston on top. Jacksonville and Tennessee trying to push up, but they're not there yet. And I think maybe the Jaguars are a little step ahead of the Titans right now, but we'll see. We'll see. Will Jalen Ramsey even play this year for, for Jacksonville? And if he does, he's a potential impact guy. Will Miles Jack pay, play for Jacksonville? Those are two really potentially great players in the draft for them. 
how does Blake Bortles continue to develop? Mm -hmm. And I just think the, the whole division at the quarterback position is really going to be interesting to watch. And, and to me, Houston, do they make the next step? I think it's on Brock Osweiler. And, boy, it's, it's, it's a little scary proposition when you step out and pay a guy $18 million a year on eight, seven career starts and expect him to take you to the promised land, you might be setting yourself up for some disappointment. It's a quarterback league, and really there's only one known commodity at that position in the division, and that's Andrew Luck in Indianapolis, which is why I think a lot of people are going to have them as the favorites going in. A lot of people think Marcus Mariota is going to be good. Blake Bortles maybe is going to take that next step. Brock Osweiler maybe changes the Texans. But there's a lot of maybes in those <laughs> statements where Andrew Luck's a known commodity if he's healthy. All right, we've got to take a break. We'll come back, maybe talk a little hockey, and also we're going to recap the Drive for Dinger Celebrity Golf Tournament Dinner and Auction coming up this weekend. Stay tuned. You're watching Sportsline right here on News Channel 5 Plus.